Hi, my name is Murad Benassim Ben Ali and I'm visiting scholar, Fulbright visiting scholar from Tunisia and actually working at the University of Arkansas. So I'm happy to present a part of my PhD like thesis about macrofungi diversity associated with core oak forest in northwestern Tunisia. Before I begin to speak about macrofungi, I think the most of you don't know where is Tunisia. So Tunisia, it's a small country situated in North Africa. It's bordered by Algeria and Libya. The capital is Tunis. And there in, the, in that country we speak several languages like Arabic, French, Italian. And the population is almost 11 million. So in Tunisia currently we don't have like mycologists. So for that I begin to interest to study mushrooms and the relation of mushrooms or macrofungi with a specific tree that grow in a specific area in Tunisia, in northwestern Tunisia, and that is like coal oak. So coal oak, it's a tree that is distributed only in seven countries. And these countries are Portugal, Spain, Morocco, Algeria, Italy, France, and Tunisia. So core oak, it's a very important tree. It's a tree that belongs to the family of Fagacea, and its name also Quercus Suber. It's a never green tree species, and it has like several important aspect. The ecologic aspect is the, that this tree can prevent from soil erosion and also it has an economic importance because it's a value source of coal. And also it contributes uh, in the preservation of the biodiversity and also in the carbon storage. So this is a picture of coal and we can use the coal for other aspect like acoustic and thermal isolation. We can use also cork for wire bottling and also for design. I think for design we use we use like cork or for design in country like Paris, like France or Portugal or Spain. So I will give like a quick like introduction about fungi and mycorrhizal fungi. So the kingdom of fungi is distributed between Kidritio micota, Zygo micota, Glero micota, and I am interested in macrofungi that are Asco micota and Basidio micota. So the macrofungi that are Asco micota and Basidio micota has several lifestyle or ecology. For example, we have macrofungi that are saprophic, like the case of Tramed versicolor and Pluritus ostriatus. This kind of fungi, saprophic fungi, colonize wood and dead organic matter found in soil. Other fungi that are named as parasitic fungi, like the case of Armillaria miela, this kind of fungi take nutriment from other organisms and not give back anything to their host. And other interesting macrofungi that are mycorrhizal fungi, and this like mycorrhizal fungi create a symbiotic relation with tree. For this fungi, there is other like aspect that we can use it like for medical like medicinal aspect in the case of armillaria miela we can use it as an antimoral and also for mycorrhizal fungi we can use this fungi as like source of food because they are edible some like some species are edible and they contain some protein mineral and carbohydrate so i'm interesting like my research is focused in mycorrhizal fungi and the mycorrhizal fungi are very important in the environment and in the forest because it like create link and exchange nutriment with the tree. 
also like my uh, like macrofungi create the mycelium of macrofungi create an organism that is named mycorrhiza with roots and this organism mycorrhiza here can like help the tree to tolerate the truth or also can protect the tree from heavy metal there is as i said an exchange between macrofungi and tree so the macrofungi give water amino acids mineral nitrogen and in return it receives carbon from the tree for the micro like mycorrhiza there is like several types so we have here the ectomycorrhiza that means that the ifia proceeds on the root cell surface we have also other type of mycorrhiza that are called endomycorrhiza or ectondomycorrhiza in this case of endomycorrhiza the iv uh, the, the ifi invade the plant cells and there is a formation of specific thing like arbuscule or vesicle or here colis and we have an alternate form between ectomycorrhiza and endomycorrhiza that we call it ectondomycorrhiza and we see here that some ifia like persist on the surface and some other invade the roots in my research i am interested in ectomycorrhiza that i it's mainly do from basidiomycota and ascomycota the objective of my study is first to make an inventory of different macrofungal species mycorrhizal saprophic and parasitic that are like mainly associate with coal oak forest in northwestern Tunisia. Also, I make some morphological and molecular characterization of the ectomycorrhiza and macrofungal fruiting body that are associated with this kind of tree. And a good aspect or interesting aspect of my like research is to highlight the edible macrofungal species that can be a source of food or source of additional income for local communities so let's see here the like the experimental site i did my research in a place named Eindraham and it's in northwestern tunisia and there the natural vegetation is dominant by coal oak or as i said before kerkus uber but we can find also some other tree like Calicotum villosa, Cistus montpellieris, Myrtus communis, and Pistachia lentiscus. So we see here a picture of the forest, also from the interior of the forest, and I try to, like, to study the effect of some ecologic parameter like elevation, slope exposure, vegetation parameters, and soil attribute like i try to study if these parameters has any effect on the distribution of macrofungi in that forest so the sampling procedure is very simple i select two slopes two different slopes the eastern slopes and the western slopes the eastern slopes is more humid and contain more species like more tree and the western slope is more dry and not contain like a high percentage of vegetation cover so from each slope i collect and take picture from macrofungal species each macrofungal species was taken photo and then i describe it according to the characteristics of pillars the gills here ring and stems and they may like and this like may more easy than the description the morphological description of macrofungi so let's go to see some edible and some also toxic species that grow in northwestern of tunisia during my we can say survey i collect 366 fruit and body and I notice that the majority of the species that I collect are mycorrhizal and belong to certain specific genera like Amanita, Russula, Lactarius, Tricoloma, 
Boletus, Igorophorus and Idnum. Don't worry, I will let you see some picture about this species to know what I'm talking about. So here's some kind of mushroom or macrofungi that are edible and some other are, that are very toxic. We have some good edible like Amarita, Caesarea and Contralius Sibarius that are also mycorrhizal and excellent edible. And we found also some deadly or poisonous macrofungi like Amanita, Ponterina, it contains a toxin named Musimol, and other Amanita like Amanita that called Amanita rubescens. It's pretty similar to the Amanita Ponterina, but it's not very very dangerous. I think you should like boil this kind of mushroom before to eat it. Other fungi that grow in northwestern Tunisia, other edible and mycorrhizal fungi like Boletus reticulatus and Craterus conopoides. We have also some deadly and poisonous macrofungi like Amanita citrina and Lactarius piperatus that can create some gastric irritation and also other like edible macrofungi like Idnum ripundum and we can found also some deadly poisonous macrofungi like Tricholoma sulfurum and Boletus satanas that is very distinctive we can say distinctive species because of the color red of the pillars and also the oxidation when we cut a part of the cap let's see now the effect of the ecologic parameters on the distribution of some species of macrofungi. So I tried before to see if there is any effect of the slope exposure and also the altitude on the number of fruiting body, genus and species. And as we as you can see here, there is like an increasement in zone number two of like the species for fruiting body, genus and species. And there is more fruiting body number in the eastern slope than the western slope. And as I said, it can be explained by the nature of the eastern slope because it contains more trees, more species of trees, and also it's more humid. After that, I try to see if there is any percentage of organic matter that contribute of the growing or where we can find like a high percentage of mycorrhizal fungi and as you can see here in the eastern slope we see an increase of the number of mycorrhizal fungi according to the increase of the percentage of organic matter and we can see that between three and four percentage of organic matter we have a high level of number of mycorrhizal fungi the same thing was also seen in the western slope but the mycorrhizal fungi well the percentage or the number of mycorrhizal fungi fruiting body was low in comparison with the eastern slope another ecologic parameter that is like ph range and i notice that the, like the majority of uh, the fungal that the fungal species that I collect are growing in pH that I called medium pH between five and four. Other fungi are related to some pH qualified like strong or p weak pH pH between five and six point eight. And we can find also some other fungi that grow anywhere without any accordance with pH. This is here some picture of some macrofungi that grow with specific pH. We have Boletus satanas and Ramaria aurea that grow in like pH that we qualify as strongly acidophilic species. We have also Amanita rubescens that grow in moderate acidophilic. We have also Amanita vaginata and Scleroderma voricosum, these two, that are qualified as weakly acidophilic, and other fungi like Panterina, 
Amanita ponturina that grow anywhere without any connection with pH. After I did this like molecular study, uh, uh, sorry, like this ecologic study, I begin to interest about mole molecular analysis. So the idea is to identify this microfungi not only based in the morphological aspect, but based in the molecular aspect, extracting DNA and doing sequencing. For that, I will like I extract DNA from macrofungi species and also from roots of core oak forest roots that probably like that contain ectomycorrhizae or thing that you can see here but i will let you see like later some good ectomycorrhizal or fungi picture so the procedure is very simple i collect some roots from a tree from a distance of two meters after that, I clean it and I do some microscopy and I isolate from it, from the root tips, some tips that I call it ectomycorrhiza and I did the DNA extraction. Usually, like we need to modify the DNA extraction according to the procedure of getting good, like good sequencing or good PCR. So it's up to us how to use the DNA like extraction kit and after that the DNA was was put in nano drop to see the concentration of the DNA also I extract DNA from fruiting body and the like we can have a good extraction when we extract from the immunium because it's like the further part of the macrofungi. So for the extraction or for doing PCR and sequencing, I use the ITS. I use some universal primer like ITS1, ITS4, and also some other ITS or primer, specific primer like ITS1F, ITS4B. After that, I did the PCR and sequencing, and I have my sequence. So this sequence is like forward and reverse sequence, and I, I, do, I did some alignment. And here you can see I have like the sequence of all the fungi, macrofungi, macrofungi, and also from the ectomycorrhiza. To make sure that I did a correct identification based in ITS, I did also an identification according to the LSU region using LR0R and LR5 primer. It's only to be sure that I'm working with the correct identification of the genera. So based on the sequence that I get from the microfungi, I was able to do this phylogenetic tree based on ITS and we notice that there is several family of macrofungi that are related with core oak tree. We can see here Amanatisea, Boletial, Coronataceae, Idnacea and Rusulacea. I did the same thing in make like in making a phylogenetic tree uh, that it's ma a mixture between mycorrhizal fungi and ectomycorrhiza and I tried to see if there is any link between ectomycorrhiza that grow in the fungi uh, grow like in the roots and also any link with the fruiting body that grow above in the soil and as you can see here I find good matches like Lactarius Subunatus from ectomycorrhizal and also from fruiting body. The same thing from Amanita rubicens and other family like Cortonarius, Bolutus reticulatus, and Idnum ripandum. Here you can see some like some ectomycorrhizal like, picture from different species of this like family of macrofungi. In conclusion, we can say that the difference in the distribution of macrofungi fruiting body were evident between humid, eastern, and dry western slope. Also, I like 
I found that ecologic parameters such as slope exposure, elevation, vegetation cover, and soil attribute can affect the distribution of mycorrhizal and saprophic fungi species that are in association with coal oak. And also, like using molecular tools, I found that family like Amanatacea, Bulotacea, Cortonacea, Idnacea, and Russulacea are the most common macrofungal family associated with coral oak tree. And molecular analysis show clear association between ectomycorrhiza macrofungi species and coral oak tree. Now I would like to introduce you some slides that or the describing what I am doing at the University of Arkansas as a visit as a Fulbright visiting scholar. So here in USA and especially in Arkansas, I try to do some study about taxonomic and molecular characterization of ectomycorrhizal fungi associated with the forest in Ozark Mountain. So here you can see that I select like several sites like Buffalo National River, Lake Weddington, Hope State Park and Pea Ridge. And in these like th uh, four sites, I study the ectomycorrhizal community that can be found in some type of oaks, like here, like black oak, post oak, white oak, and other tree like the Ozark chinkapen. And well, like here in LMU, I collect uh, some sample from chestnut. American chestnut with Dr. Uh, Rawlings and I hope also I will like found some interesting fungi community. So this is like preliminary so like results. It's a list of ectomycorrhizal species that I detect in this kind of tree. Of course it's like only like preliminary results. I have other sample. I have I think 300 sample to process to do sequencing but I found interesting to let you see this kind of of species that I'm found in this different tree. So in the white oak, I found 23 ECM species, at least 23 ECM species. In chinkapen, 10 ECM species at least, and post oak, 2, two species, 2 ECM species, but I have like more sample to process, so I think I will find more. And the interesting here, interesting thing, that there is like a community of Rusula, genus Rusula, that are present in white oak, chinkapen oak, post oak, like not post oak, but black oak, and maybe after I will process all the sequence, I will find also more Rusula in post oak and black oak. And before to finish, I would like to share with you this like amazing picture of ectomycorrhizal species that I found here in Arkansas. I found uh, some species like Russula, also Amanita, Inusib, and also here Idnum. Some species like some ectomycorrhizal I identified to the level of the species, but some other I was only able to identify it at the level of the genus, like here Russula species and uh, Clavulina species. Other I'm like continuing to try to get some DNA, good DNA and also do some PCR to identify this kind of fungus that are in relation or that grow in this coal oak, uh, in this like oak tree. And before I finish, I give you my email and I will be very happy to answer to your question if you have one. Thank you for your attention and see you.